Uh, so he said, how would you analyze capital allocation decisions? Can it be reflected on financial statements? Uh, mm -hmm. So just to start that off, I guess it definitely is pretty much in the cash flow statement will tell you exactly what they're doing with this capital. Um, the main capital allocation decisions, there's five, I'll try to get them, but buybacks, dividends, um, reinvesting, uh, acquiring a company, and there's one other main one. There you go, I've got four of them. Um, and they're all, you can find them all in the financial statements, but you could also just see it through the growth of the company. So whether it's the f actual financial statements themselves or the investor presentations and other information the company's put out, you can see the type of returns they're getting on the investments that they're making. You can clearly see the buybacks on a cash flow statement or um, dividends as well, of course. So certainly it is in there. And it's a big part of assessing the one way you can assess management quantitatively, I guess. Most aspects of management, you're looking qualitatively, but um, yeah, you can see the capital allocation decisions through the financial statements, of course. Yeah, it, it, both are important for sure. Like the wealth example I gave was definitely much more qualitative, but then Frank, your example with Singleton was very uh, 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 quantitative and then it was very yeah. numbers, it's very earnings multiple driven and both are clearly worthwhile <laughs> to look at. And a combination of both is is the most wonderful thing, but that's very hard to do, of course. And Singleton, yeah. for example, would have been a hard one to have qualitative aspects because he never spoke to media. He really was a private right. person. So it'd be hard to get his plan, well, his vision and everything of what he was planning to do. So you really have to look at those numbers and be able to interpret that's a good idea. And at the time that would have been very hard to do because it was he was the first one to kind of do that type of approach, I guess. And numbers are and numbers are a good way to actually evaluate the qualitative aspects. Um, are they doing what they what they're planning to do? Um, are they sticking with something? Is there a trend that they're following? You can tell a lot about the qualitative aspects through the numbers. You just uh, sometimes it can be a little cryptic, especially if it's a large sort of shift towards a, maybe a new industry or something like that. Or um, both are important for sure, but numbers are probably easier to gauge quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the areas I probably pay most attention to would be uh, things like return on equity and return on invested capital. If, yeah. if they're making significant investments in return on equity and return on invested capital are declining, that's probably not a particularly promising sign. Although there are exceptions to that, like at a certain point, you know, Berkshire's again is a good example. You, you get to a certain point where it's hard to keep reinvesting at high rates and if you want to keep reinvesting rather than paying out dividends, then you're probably going to have to get into some slightly lower quality businesses or, or more capital intensive businesses in the case of Berkshire with the railroads and the Berkshire Hathaway energies and that sort of thing. But um, return on equity and return on invested capital, I pay a lot of attention to. Um, and then I, I guess the way Buffett would look at it was, as he sort of says, um, you know, we give our businesses the capital they require to meet their own needs first and then we look for other uses of capital and that's when it comes into a few other things that Frank mentioned around are we better off investing in new businesses or are we better off um, buying back shares or paying dividends and all that sort of stuff so those are a, a few of the things I pay attention to.